This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. But I'm going to go through and look at the management commentary. Uh, it's not so much an important or huge element of the syllabus. Unlike your ethics and current issues within this area of the syllabus, it, it's of much less importance. However, I think it's worthwhile having a knowledge and an idea of what it's all about. Because essentially what you've got is if you think about your annual report, what we've gone through and focused on is the back half, isn't it? We've looked at all of the financial statements, the statement of financial position, profit or loss and OCI, the statement of cash flow, statement of change in equity, all the explanatory notes and accounting policies, haven't we? we we've seen them in consummate amounts of detail. I mean, you're probably quite scared about the volume. What we've got as well to make up the annual report, as well as having the financial statements, you've also got that the narrative that accompanies the financial statements contained within the annual report. The financial statements themselves are very voluminous. And then on top of that, you've then got the narrative aspect. And the narrative aspect is effectively known as the management commentary. So you've got the management commentary and the financial statements. Now, the financial statements are all governed by IFRSs, aren't they? So what then governs the management commentary and until recently there was, there was no guidance at least internationally about what that management commentary should actually contain if potentially you were in the uk you may have had uh, some guidance available there and in some more developed countries there may have been guidance available there but for, from an international perspective that, that there was no specific guidance as to what should be included about or within that management commentary. And it's very important, isn't it, your management commentary, because it gives you the narrative of what's going on within the financial statements. So it makes it easier for the user of the accounts to actually understand what's happening in that complex mess that's the financial statements with all those complex accounting rules and standards and issues that we've dealt with in those crazy difficult numbers to go through there and calculate and try and explain and understand all about share-based payment deferred tax what on earth it's nonsense isn't it crazy so the management commentary is hopefully going to go through and help the user of the accounts understand the numbers uh but another issue about the numbers and you know one of the biggest issues that you have with regards to financial reporting is we're looking that way aren't we we're, we're looking into the past what about that way? What about the future? What about our strategy for future development? How does the user of the accounts know what this business is going to do to try and turn around our fortunes to either create a profit from what's currently a loss making situation or to go through there and increase our already good levels of profits? And that's what as well happens within the management commentary. Uh, it gives you not just a narrative explanation of what's happened in the current year. It goes through there and tries to assess what's going to happen into the future, what your aims are, what your strategy is to go through and try and achieve that, as well as what risks that there are that you could be faced with as you try to pursue that strategy. Now, a lot of that sounds like common sense, but until 2010, until the practice statement on your management commentary was released, there was nothing that gave you specific guidance about what should be in the front of the book, uh, i.e. your annual report, when there is huge amounts of guidance with what's in the back with regards to the financial statement. So there was a bit of a, 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 a lack of symmetry, wasn't there? Yeah, you can put whatever you wanted in the management commentary, and then you were regulated by what went into the financial statements. At least now what we have is a bit of guidance and a bit of detail as to what we should have within that management commentary. Feel free to go through and have a read of the bits of background information. But what I want to draw your attention to is what you have at the bottom of the class notes there. So it emphasises that there should be a narrative disclosure and also a, a numerate disclosure as well. So a balance between the numbers and the narrative. And then it goes through there and just gives you some more specifics about advice that they consider relevant to include within your management commentary. So the nature of your business, what products do you offer, what services do you offer and how you see those products and services operating into the future. So what are the objectives that you intend to do going forward 
in the next financial year and beyond with the current products and the current services. So what developments are you going to make? Again, you've got to be careful because you need to be a bit careful that you're not disclosing too much information to your competitors. Uh, but you, know, you, you still want to ensure that the users of the accounts are confident in your ability to operate into the future. Uh, as well as the nature of the business and the management objectives, they also want to look at the strategies. Uh, so how do you go and intend to, to break into maybe that new market? Are we going to go uh, and operate there through maybe growth via acquisition? Are we going to go through there and operate organically? Uh, are we going to go through there and be a, a differentiator? Are we going to be a cost leader? So what are the strategies into the future? Uh, we mentioned as well, uh, thinking about the risks that are going to be potentially faced, uh, as well as the risks. It talks about the resources and also the regulations. So I think a lot of companies now with regards to their management commentary will be dealing with the issue that the UK has decided to leave the EU. Uh, and that's going to go through there and give rise to regulatory changes and if not more risks in terms of how businesses go through there and operate. Are they able to trade as freely as what they were previously? Uh, the results of the operations and the prospects. Uh, so talking about what's happened in the past with regards to the results and how you expect those to develop in the future. And then the last one talking about performance measures. That's thinking about your ratios and your ratio analysis that you've done previously in F7, but also do not neglect the non-financial aspects as well. It's not just all about the numbers. We need to try and move away from the numbers. So the non-financial aspects can start to thinking about uh, your social responsibility, your corporate and social responsibility and your business's attitude to that and how we are measuring our carbon footprint and how we can go through there and try and improve that from, from if you like, a non-financial perspective. It, it may be numerical in terms of how we measure it, but it's not financial based, is it? It doesn't impact the numbers directly in the back of the annual report within the financial statements. Now, I can't see this cropping up in any huge amounts of detail. Uh, if it were to crop up, I think it would just form a few marks within questions two or three, or maybe form part of a current issues question with regard to disclosure. You know, the, the management commentary essentially, again, it is a, is a huge bit at the front of the annual report, which again is disclosure. Have we not had enough of disclosure already with regards to IFRS 7, financial instruments disclosure? IFRS 8 going through there and looking at your operating segments disclosure, related party disclosures, there's just so much disclosure contained within IFRS. And now we've got that management commentary to go through there and consider. However, it's optional. You don't have to put in the management commentary. However, if you do, it would be beneficial to try and follow the principles that you're given within that practice statement. From an auditor's perspective, the biggest risk, I suppose, is the numbers at the back needs to match up to the narrative. So you would need to give an opinion upon that and that what is written in the management commentary faithfully reflects what's happened within the numbers, within the financial statements. Other than that, uh, my recommendation would be to get more attuned with what happens in the management commentary. Choose a set of accounts, take an annual report of a company that you know well and read the management commentary at the front. And that will go through there and give you all the information that you need and help you understand the management commentary and how it works that little bit better. So that if it were to come up within the exam, you'll be able to quote some real life examples at the examiner. Other than that, that's it with regards to our management commentary. We'll move on and look at the all important current issues and question four in the next session. I'll see you there.